Good evening friends. Today we shall be discussing about the safety management systems in mines. You know nowadays there is a trend of systems because we need to adopt systems and if anything is system proof we can be sure about the uh, successful implementation of the things. So that's why these safety management systems originally this concept arose in Australia. Now there was a Indo-Australian group was formed uh, with the DGMS authorities and uh, some Australian mining company. They came together, they studied the Indian conditions, they studied the safety management system over there in Australia and they have come out with a tailor-made specific safety management system to be adopted in Indian mines. That way this all started uh, in the 9th safety conference. 9th safety conference recommended that risk assessment as a tool to improve safety standards in mines should be adopted in all the mines. Initially DGMS, DGMS as you know it is the representative of the central government. So initially DGMS uh, suggested to all the company owners to identify one or more mines and uh, to uh, start the risk uh, assessment, risk ranking, risk management process in those mines and gradually that system was expected to be extended to other mines. It was way back in uh, 2002 when a circular, detailed circular, it's a 27 pages circular, it was uh, issued by DGMS detailing all the uh, factors which will be very very useful for practical implementation of the system unfortunately till 2011 not much was done what are the reasons maybe uh, perhaps the concept being new or uh, the the concept not being percolated to the ground level uh, these factors could be there but uh, reasons best known to the almighty Again in 2011, same circular was reissued and after that a little bit of seriousness came. Some of the companies then uh, identified one or four, few mines, one or two mines. In Moil also we had identified one Balagat mine, it is an uh, underground mine and one was a Dongri Buzruk mine, open cast mine. These two mines were identified and we prepared a, a risk uh, safety management system based on the risk assessment for these two mines. Gradually the thing was extended to all the other mines. We have 10 mines in Moil. After 2011 when people started adopting this system, so there were some teething problems, there were some uh, specific issues which were not exactly being comprehended. So again DGMS continuously issued several circulars. A circular MAMID, MAMID 1, MAMID 2, these two circulars were issued in the year 2014 detailing the uh, consequence and, uh, and probability and exposure and all those sorts of things. So it was uh, simplified, simplified and further simplified and very recently in the year 2016 circular number, uh, circular number 5 was issued detailing uh, the, it, it, it comprises of about 8 tables. So the entire safety management plan is can be or expected to be prepared on those lines the circular number 5 of 2016 it so happened that in the year 2017 last year November 27th November the coal mines regulations it came into force called as coal mines regulation 2017 in that coal mines regulation it has been now incorporated during the notice of opening uh, perhaps uh, regulation number 3B um, or 32B something like that. So the um, owner, agent and manager, those who are going to uh, give the notice of opening of a mine, they will have to attach the safety management plan along with the notice. It envisages means what type of uh, hazards and what type of risks are anticipated and how the management is going to build up the capabilities to deal with those hazards, those risks. So that way the safety management plan is to be issued at the very starting stage that is notice of opening. Now as regards those mines which are already working, for those mines there is a uh, scope that you can submit the safety management plan within one year. 
of the coming into force of these coal mines regulations 2017 so at, as it came into force in november 2017 so you can take it to be up to november 2018 now in this safety management plan they have suggested to first the exposure uh, was one of the main criteria how to calculate the exposure and how to come to a conclusion because in the initial circular it was written that exposure if it is continuous then take 10 then if it is uh, say daily then take 5 and uh, monthly uh, occasionally once in a year etc etc the markings were coming down like that now in this particular circular circular number 5 of 2016 they have added one more thing that thing is if the percentage of people involved or exposed to the uh, risk or who are at the threat if it is more than 40 percent then we need to take the exposure to be maximum that is the most important thing you can take the example of uh, the recent accident uh, raj mahal mines lal matia in that lal matia mines the entire dumped material to the tune of millions of cubic meter it came down maybe due to a fault or something like that the inquiry is going on right now we cannot comment on it but the entire huge mass of the dumped material it uh, toppled down and as many as as many as they say 35 tippers seven excavators all have been uh, buried uh, till now only 18 bodies have come up but we don't know what what could be the fate of the thing it is right now not proper to speak on it so that way whenever such a situation arises that more than 40 the entire shift had gone the entire shift died entire thing submerged so whenever there is a situation more than 40 percent people are going to be affected then you must take the exposure to be maximum that is one of the criteria then they have given in the second table initial uh, hazard identification you have to initially identify a few hazards uh, generally what we do is principal hazards there are certain principal hazards related with mining those principal hazards need to be taken into consideration primarily for example in case of mines you can take it as fire you can take it as inundation you can take it as strata control you can take it as vehicle movement these sorts of things are there then in case of underground coal mines it could be explosion and fire and all these things are there so these are principal mining hazards this must be taken into consideration secondly it is the workplace risk that needs to be incorporated thirdly accident prevention from the point of view of accident prevention wherever we find any uh, possibility probability of some accident some chance of some accident then we need to formulate a risk assessment for that and again we have to plan the entire thing and we have to come up with a safety management plan for that uh, they are also recommending to go for job safety analysis job safety analysis to me it is restricted to particular jobs in case of mines there are situations when certain jobs are not carried out daily for example we may be purchasing dumpers say we are going to purchase dumpers to 40 ton dumpers or whatever it may be so we don't uh, purchase the dumpers frequently once we purchase we may be using it for five years six years or what depending on the things so after five years whenever we are going to again uh, purchase some dumpers so they will be supplied uh, in parts and those parts will be assembled at the mine so that is a specific job in such specific jobs there could be certain hazards which also need to be taken into consideration so that way principal mining hazards workplace risk assessment accident prevention related thing job safety analysis all these type of hazards and risks are to be covered in a safety management plan then after the initial hazard identification dgms has suggested to go for as far as quantitative risk assessment is concerned they have made three categories in these three categories the risk the those risks which have a risk score uh, more than 200 they are considered as high risk so those high risks need immediate attention of the management second category is it's a quite a wide category between 20 to 200 so these risks come under the ongoing uh, uh, we need to be monitoring it 
continuously. So, where ongoing controls are required, so those are this and third one is below 20. So, they take it in a low category. So, those risks we can afford to live with. 